John chapter number 21. I want you to take your Bible this morning. Turn with me to the book of John chapter number 21. And I want us to start reading in verse number 1. John 21 verse number 1. If you're there, say amen. amen. If you're headed there, say amen. amen. Alright, if you can't find John 21 in just a minute, if you'll quit flipping pages, you could be in Corinthians. Nobody will ever know. <laughs> John chapter 21 is where I want to look at this morning. Verse number 1, the Bible says this, After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples. And Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. And they say unto him, We also go with thee. And they went forth, and they entered into a ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples, they knew not that it was Jesus. And then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? And they answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. And they cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits dragging the net, with fishes. And as soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. And Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. And Simon Peter went up and drew the net to the land full of great fishes, a hundred and fifty three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Verse number 12 Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples dost ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. Let's pray. Father, I pray you'd help us this morning. God, I pray that you'd give us strength to preach the Word of God. Lord, I pray that you would bring to remembrance the message that you put on my heart this morning. God, I pray that you'd guard my tongue, guard my mind. Lord, help me to preach, thus saith the Lord. Father, I pray if there's one today that's lost. God, they don't know you as their personal Savior. Lord, I pray today that Holy Ghost conviction would fall upon their life. Lord, they'd realize their need of a Savior. Lord, I pray that today they would get eternally born again. God, I pray for that Christian that may have came in today. Lord, they're cold, they're indifferent. Lord, they're backslidden. God, I pray that you would have fellowship. Lord, I pray the invitation that we just read. I I pray, God, you'd speak to them, come and die. Lord, I pray that you would show them how sweet fellowship with the Lord truly can be. God, I pray that everything done here today, Lord, would be done for the honor and glory. Lord, bless Brother Jonathan and his family. Lord, help them to get back home safely. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We read in John chapter number 21 and we find that this is another encounter of Jesus after He has been resurrected. You remember in the upper room they were all gathered together. They were scared. They were fearful. One of the reasons that they were so fearful because they had just watched their best friend Jesus get hung on a cross. And so they thought to themselves, if they'll do that to him, surely they'll do it to us. And so they gathered themselves to the upper room. And as they were there that day, the Bible said that Jesus walked in. Now I love that story because he didn't come through a front door. He didn't open up a window. Listen, he, he walked through a wall. One minute he wasn't there and the next minute he was. And in that moment, you would have thought that that would have been enough for the disciples to say, you know what, the Lord truly has all of this under control. 
You would have thought in this moment that the disciples had a fire started in them that said, we're going to go out and we're going to reach the rest of this generation because of who Jesus and what Jesus has done. But Simon Peter, that old ringleader, the one that's cussing one minute, preaching Pentecost the next. Can anybody identify? The one that is always sticking his foot in his mouth. After this meeting with the upper room, they gather themselves together and Simon Peter says, you know what, i got a good idea, fellas. Let's go fishing. That's, can I get an amen in God? That's a pretty good idea. I mean, some, it, it, but in this case it wasn't. Because when we find that Simon Peter does this, we understand that this was not the opportunity to fish. But I began to read this and I began to think that sometimes, and I'm going to need a good amen right here, sometimes God is so good to us and sometimes God pours out His blessings so much upon our lives that it's as if we get spiritual amnesia. How many of you know that God will bless us, but we have to operate and realize that He blesses us to continue on in the work of the Lord? God has showed up to them and Jesus has come to them and He has put Himself in a place where He says, Guys, I'm okay. I told you I was going to die. I was going to be buried, but I would be resurrected again. But Simon Peter looks at him that day and he says, You know what, guys? He said, We can do all that stuff later. He said, Let's go fishing. And I'm here this morning to say that sometimes there are dangers And in their case, there was a danger of the resurrected Christ. Because in this moment, we find that they start resorting back to the lifestyle that they had before Jesus Christ. I want to show you some dangers that I find here in this passage of Scripture. Number one, I want you to notice this. The first danger is this, they went back to their old ways. Verse number 3, the Bible says this, that Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. Now let me say this, there was no problem with them being fishers. That was their job, that was their trade, that is how they made a living. But if you remember, Jesus showed up that day and He looked at those men standing there and He says, why don't y'all come and follow me? And those disciples, they said, you know what, we're going to trust you, we're going to follow me. And the Lord said... Forsake all. He said, because today you're no longer going to be fishing for fish. He said, but today you're going to be fishers of men. And so when we read this passage of Scripture, you've got to understand that no, there was nothing wrong with fishing, but what we see in the disciples' life is that they had gone back to the very thing that God had pulled them out of. They went back to the old habits. They went back to the old lifestyle. They went back to a place where Jesus said, it's time to forsake all of this and start following me. Listen, just because Jesus had died and was buried and rose again the third day does not mean that their job stopped of being fishers of men. And I say to you this morning that a fisher of men, that is a lifetime commitment that we take upon ourselves and we say that no matter what it is, we won't let our job get in the way. We won't let our family get in the way. We won't let other hobbies and habits get in the way. But when God calls us to be a fisher of men, that is a lifetime commitment to the Lord. But here we find these disciples, they start going back to their old way. And can I say to you this morning that that is a danger that you and I will face at times? I'm going to need better amen than that. I, you look, I know it's Sunday morning, but y'all ain't as spiritual as y'all look, all right? <laughs> How many of you know that that is a danger that we face every single day? That's a danger that I face in my own. You say, Brother Brandon, you're a pastor, you're a preacher, you're a husband, you're a dad. You're a, you're, you've got all of these titles and you're all of these things. But listen, if I am real with myself this morning and if you're real with yourself, there is a danger that we all face of going back to the old things that Jesus has saved us from. That's a danger that we will have to face. And here we find that the disciples, they were guilty of this charge. They went back to their old ways. 
If nothing else I say to you this morning, I want you to realize this. Don't be fooled by the tactics of Satan to resort back to the old things. The very things that Jesus has pulled you from. Listen, there are people that God has removed out of your life. Praise the Lord, let them stay. There are some things that the Lord has taken from you. Listen, do your best to march forward in the work of the Lord and not look back because there are times where it will be so tempting to go back to the very things that Christ has saved you out of. The danger I see here is they went back to their old ways. Number two, the next danger that I see is this. It was difficult for them to identify Christ. Look at verse number four. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, watch this, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Now there's something I find interesting about this. This is not the first time they had seen Jesus. They knew who He was. They understood who He was. They lived with Him for three years. They had saw Him in the upper room. They had put their eyes upon Him. They knew that it was Jesus. But watch this. Sometimes when you go back to your old ways, it gets real hard to identify who Jesus is. Things that the Lord will do in your life and show up in your life and you've got to be careful of going back to those old ways because I can tell you from experience sometimes it's hard to identify Jesus when you're living back in your old ways. The Lord show up and do things for you and you'll, you'll give it to luck. You'll give it to coincidence. You'll show up to a church and listen, God will be moving in this place and the Lord will be here and the preaching and the singing, but you're so far away from God, He could be standing in front of you right now today and you'd have no idea who He was. You say, oh, preacher, you, you can't tell me you believe that. Listen, if anybody knew who Jesus was, it was them disciples. If anybody knew who He was, it was them. But when they stood there that day, listen, they looked at Him and they knew not that it was the Lord. And I want you to, say, I want you to understand this. That when you resort back to your old ways, sometimes it may get difficult to identify Christ. You say, you say, preacher, how do you know that? Listen, there's been times in my life when I have sat in a church service and didn't feel a thing. Now you say, what was going on? Listen, the Lord was there. The Word was being preached. The singing was absolutely incredible. But you know what the problem was? It wasn't a singer. It wasn't a preacher. It wasn't the, the Word that was being preached. It was me. It was myself. I was having a hard time identifying Christ because I had drifted so far from His presence. It was difficult for them to identify Christ. But watch this. The third danger that I see is this. They had no success. Look at verse number 5. Then, saith, then Jesus saith unto them, I love this, because it's almost as if, as if he's taunting them. I, I mean, you listen, you, I wish y'all could get in my mind for a second. You, listen, you'd have to be on every anxiety pill that they prescribe at the doctor's office. I, I, when I read this, I, I, I almost, it, to me it feels like an old WWF promo. I mean, there, there's smack talk going on. Somebody holler amen. I mean, it's like Dusty Rhodes and Ric Flair. I mean, it's it, the, the, what, listen, the Lord, you've got to understand, He ain't happy with them. It, it, they, li, they've got the WWF title, and He's mad about it. Yeah. Everybody picking up what I'm putting down? And G, he starts taunting them. I, come see me after church. I'll do my best Dusty Rhodes impression. <laughs> I'll say this. If Dusty Rhodes wouldn't have made it as a, as a wrestler, he'd have been a real good preacher. Amen? Real good preacher. Listen to what Jesus says in verse number 5. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have you any meat? Now, now if he was in Georgia, he'd say this. Hey, boys, y'all been catching anything? <laughs> Knowing the answer. The, listen, the Lord, he'd been watching them. They'd been told and they'd been trying and they haven't caught a thing. And Jesus said, y'all got any meat? 
And watch this. And they answered him, No. <laughs> and he said unto them, Watch this. Now you got to understand. He said, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. Now listen, when, when the Lord says this, you've got to understand. They're standing here on the left side of the boat, and in their mind they're saying, you really think us walking five steps this way and throwing on this side is going to do any better? I mean, I don't know about you, but if there's fish here, there's got to be fish there. It, it, it's almost as if the Lord is he, he's, he's messing with them. He said, why don't you cast your net on the right side of the ship? It's almost like he's saying this. You know what y'all's problem is? You've been fishing on the wrong side. And in this moment, listen, they were fishing on the wrong side and they had no success. Let me ask you something this morning. You ever felt like in life you had no success? You ever felt like you was trying your best to do and you were trying, listen, I mean, you was, you was holding your mouth right, tying that knot. I mean, you spray some of that good garlic sauce on your, on your lure. I mean, you was throwing it out there. You was doing everything. You, you ever felt like that in life? You ever felt like you was doing everything? You was coming to church on Sunday morning. You was serving during VBS. You was helping out with meals on Thursday night. You even a couple times got a little wild and showed up to Sunday school on Sunday morning. I mean, don't get me crazy, but if they, if, if they put a volunteer list out there, you'd even try that if you thought it'd help you be successful. But have you ever felt like that in life? You were doing everything that you knew to do right. And in that moment still felt like you had no success. You know what I find interesting about this story? Jesus says, y'all got any meat? They said, no. He said, well, why don't you go over and cast on the right side? And watch this. The difference between failure and success was just the width of the boat. Can I say to you this morning, success may be a whole lot closer to your life than you even know. You may be right on the verge of success and you feel like the littlest thing that you do, you would think there's no way that going from this side to that side will be the difference between success and failure. But as you begin to walk and you begin to throw and you begin to do, you start finding success. You know where success was found? In the voice of the Lord. And in that moment... They realized that the reason they had no success wasn't because they didn't hold their mouth right when they threw their net out. Wasn't because they had a banana in the boat. It wasn't because they, they, they had broken nets. It wasn't because of anything other than they had forsaken the voice of the Lord, but at His voice and at His command and at His word is where they found their failure turn into success. I want to say to you this morning, the way to be successful is to listen to the voice of the Lord. Amen. Put that in the book and it'll sell millions. I, I mean, listen, it, one chapter, one sentence in a book, and we can, listen, we could, we could build a whole new building. We wouldn't even have to fundraise no more. I mean, we would absolutely just, if we could let people know that the greatest opportunity to be successful is this. Obeying the voice of the Lord. That is where their failures turned into success. They just made a little turn. They walked the width of the ship and they found success. But there's dangers. And I would love to tell you this morning that, listen, you're going to go out of here, you're going to remember this sermon, and it's going to be... You may walk out of here, and by the time you eat lunch, go home, strip down to your skivvies, get in the bed. I mean, you, you, you're you going to be like, I don't even remember that guy's name, Brandon, Brian, Brad, I can't remember, something like that. Yeah, he said something about Dusty Road. I don't know, but you may not ever remember this message. But remember this this morning. We all face the dangers of living in the blessings of God because those dangers of being blessed may cause us to feel like 
we can do it on our own. And when you start living like this, and you start operating your life in that manner, don't be surprised when you fall back into some old habits. Don't be surprised when you show up to church and it, it just don't speak to you like it did. Well, we love Brother Jonathan, but his preaching just ain't what it used to be. No, you ain't what you used to be. The word's still being preached. The songs are still being sung. It's not that. That's not the problem. The problem I have found so many times is not everybody around me, but it is me. And when I start finding myself in that position, I understand in my own life I have a hard time identifying Christ. And you'll think, well, we'll just go to another church and see. Listen, you're going to go there and it's going to be the same thing. You're going to love it for a month. And then you're going to start missing for two months. And then you know what I found? We always find ourselves back up here. <laughs> you know why? Because we understand this wasn't a problem. It was me. It was my own personal self having a problem identifying Jesus in a room like this. Why? Because I fell back into some old ways. And that identifying Jesus, it became difficult. And then when I can't identify who Jesus is, surely I'm not listening to Him. Surely I'm not reading His Word. And in those moments I find myself operating more in failure than I am in success. Because success is truly found at the Word of the Lord. But here they are. A bunch of failures. Embarrassed. Simon Peter, listen, he was, I mean, he was naked. He, he put on his fisher coat and he jumped, I don't even know why he was, but he, he jumped in the water, he put his fisher coat on, he jumped in the water, and he swam to shore. And can you imagine that at this moment? I, I thought about this. I'm going to need a good amen right here. You better be glad I ain't the Lord. Amen goes right there. And I'm glad you ain't the Lord. Because if I'd been the Lord, the moment Simon Peter stepped up on that shore, I'd have been like, uh huh. <laughs> what are you going to do now, bud? I mean, I'd have looked at Simon Peter that day and say, Man, I thought we got all this cleared up when you cut off the high priest's ear. I mean, you know, I, I, I thought everything was... You remember that little episode that you had on the Mount Transfiguration when me and Elijah and Moses were standing there and you had to open your big mouth talking about building kingdoms and temples and Simon, I thought we were over this. But Jesus didn't rebuke him. Simon Peter comes to the shore and the Lord says in verse number 12, he offers the invitation, he said, why don't y'all come get something to eat? I mean, in this, in this passage of Scripture, Jesus said, Simon, come and die. And Jesus, listen, he, he knew all of this. He, he wasn't even, he'd already went by Captain D's and got a box of fish and had it sitting on the, amen. And let me just say this, Captain D's ain't good Captain D's until you baptize that fish in vinegar. Somebody all are amen. Man, if we're ever on the road and we stop at Captain D's, my wife hates it. Look, she, she, she's already gone. She left. Because, boy, that stuff stinks, but, man, it's good. Jesus had already had fish ready and waiting for him. You know why? Because he knew he wanted to have a little bit of fellowship with a bunch of those failures that went against his word and was back living in their old ways and had a hard time noticing who he was on the shore, Jesus said, come and die. And Jesus, he builds a fire, and, and, and I love to think this, he just wanted fellowship with them. And he feeds them. He gives them fish. He gives them bread. He lights up a fire. He said, y'all been in that water. It's been cold. Y'all get over here and get close. Get warm. Get your bellies full. Let's fellowship for a while. Y'all ever had the Lord do that to you? Know when you've been living an unfaithful life to Him? But boy, you show up to church 
And you feel a drawing of the Holy Spirit of God. And those songs start moving your heart. And that word starts piercing inside. And you feel so good about what's going on in here. Listen, even in your unfaithfulness to God, He has no more of a desire than to just want to pull you in close and say, I just want fellowship with you. And I want you to look at verse number 15 because I want to show you this and and then I'm done. It's only been six minutes. Man, that's good. Watch this. So when they had dined, Jesus saith unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? And he said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he saith unto them, Feed my lambs. And he said unto him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he saith unto him, Feed my sheep. And he saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And Peter was grieved because he had said unto him, Watch this, the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. And Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Now listen, verse number 15 says that all of this comes after they had died. Remember, I told you I'd have rebuked him right then and there. But Jesus fellowshiped with them for a while. He made sure they were fed. He made sure they were warm from the fire. And then after their little bit of fellowship, he grabs old Simon Peter to the side and he said, Simon, let me ask you something. He said, you love me? Simon said, Lord, you know I love you. And right after that, he says it a second time, he said, Simon, I need to ask you another question. Do you love me? Simon said, Lord, yeah, I I just told you. I I love you. And a third time, Jesus looked at him and said, Simon, I need to ask you another question. One more and we're done. Do you love me? And Simon Peter said, Lord, you know all things. You, you, You know that I love you. And Jesus said, go feed my sheep. Now listen, that's no coincidence. Because if you'll remember, Jesus had just been taken away. Simon Peter's sitting outside and he's warming himself by fire. A little girl walks out on the porch and said, Hey, ain't you Simon Peter? Don't you, don't, wasn't you hanging out with that man named Jesus? You know what Simon said? He said, Jesus? I don't know no Jesus. And two other accounts you'll find that people recognize Simon Peter walking about and and not only once, not only twice, but three times when he was questioned about his involvement with this man named Jesus. Simon Peter says, look, I don't know no Jesus. I ain't never heard of no Jesus. I have no idea who this man named Jesus is. And here the Lord shows up. And for the three times that Simon Peter denied the Lord, the Lord gives him three more opportunities to prove to him that he truly loved Jesus. You say, preacher, I've I've messed up in life. I have failed more times than you can even think. But can I ask you a question this morning? How many times has the Lord showed up again in your life and given you opportunity after opportunity to have this kind of fellowship with Him?